Hey, I'm Joe with J-Road Studios. Today we're going to take all this white oak and turn it into a farmhouse TV stand. So stay tuned and see how we do it. The first thing we had to do is break down all this four quarter white oak for the top of the TV stand. So just quickly getting rough lengths, making some marks. All of these are oversized. Like I said, I'll fine tune it later on. And then I'm just gonna edge joint these boards. I wanna keep these as thick as possible. They were all just shy of an inch. I think they're 15 16 So I wanted to keep it, give it a nice beefy feel to it. So once I got the edges all jointed, then I went and ran everything through the table saw to square off that other edge. And then just quickly went and laid out some dominoes. This is gonna help with alignment, especially since I didn't face join or plane these boards. Um, they're all pretty consistent, but there was little wonks here and there. So this is just gonna make it a lot less stressful glue up. Speaking of glue ups, here we go. Just gonna pull all those dominoes out. Just using some type on two, get a nice thick bead. Like I said, I'm not too worried about it, squeeze out because I do have to clean this up later. But just running everything down, plopping my dominoes in, and then just going down the line, each board. Like I said, this is a whole lot easier and faster. And then for the ends, it's always good to put little F-style clamps on there just to help keep everything lined up at the ends. Um, it really does make a big difference as far as the amount of cleanup you'll have to do later. With the top set aside, drawing in clamps, it's time to go ahead and start breaking down these sheets of plywood for our carcass. So whenever I'm doing a big four by eight sheet, I always like to make that first cut a little oversized, um, just because you're never gonna get a perfectly straight edge when you're pulling a full sheet through the table saw. So I always leave it about a quarter inch oversized and then I come back and cut it down after. Break these down into my individual pieces. I busted out the track saw and did this cut in two passes. An initial scoring cut just to break the surface and then a full depth pass. This just really minimizes my tear out. Once everything cut, just went ahead and made sure it was square. And now I could fine tune my pieces over at the table saw. So I'm make, right now I'm making my sides and then my interior dividers for the cabinet. So just, just cleaning up all those edges and then cutting everything down to final dimension. With all my parts cut out, now it's time to start figuring out where everything's gonna land and start cutting out some joinery. So just divided this sheet up into four sections You'll have one quarter on each end, and then you'll have your half in the middle. So give you a good spacing for that farm style, because we're gonna do some sliding doors later on. So just getting everything roughly placed, taking some measurements to make sure that I can do a little bit of math. Now for these middle dividers, since they are sitting on top of the plywood and they're not on the edge like the outside ones, I do have to go ahead and cut that three quarters of an inch off to get them to sit flush and be all the same height across. So table saw makes quick work of that. Hook this thing together and keep all my fasteners hidden. Just gonna use some dominoes. I think three for each section, nothing too crazy. Now you could also use pocket holes from the underside and screw straight up from the bottom for your middle sections. Like I said, I already had it out and set up, so this made quick work of it. With my dominoes cut, it's time to do a dry assembly and start taking some measurements for the face frame. Now this is gonna get a four quarter white oak face frame all the way around to hide all those plywood edges. Now that we know the exact size our face frame needs to be, I'm just gonna go ahead and run all that white oak through the table saw. So just ripping everything down to width. And then just using a stop block on the miter gauge, cross cut all my pieces to length. Once those were cut out, it was time to go ahead and start hooking them together. Now face frames, there's no reason to go elaborate. Literally just using pocket holes. You're never gonna see these, they're all on the inside. Um, and for face frames, this works great. So just running all my pieces through. Definitely need to get a new bit. This one's pretty dull, so kind of fighting me a little bit. And then just smearing a little glue on the edge and clamping everything down to the table. This ensures everything is lined up and square. And then I just run those screws in. Now to attach the face frame to the cabinet, I'm just gonna use some four millimeter dominoes to keep everything lined up during the glue up. I'm not adding any strength here, but it does take a lot of the stress out of the glue up. Now a biscuit joiner is the preferred method. Uh, I just don't have one at the moment. I'm sure I'll find one at some point, but you know, use what you got. This works the exact same way. Once everything's cut out on the face frame, just gonna go over to the cabinet and cut the matching mortises. Now, as long as I did everything correctly, all of these dominoes should just snap into place and hold this face frame on. Um, and luckily everything did. You know, a little convincing, a little taparoo with a hammer fist. Next up is gonna be cutting out this quarter inch groove or dado in the back of our cabinet. This is gonna house the back panel. So I like to do this in two passes. I use an eighth inch or a full curved blade, tap the fence over a little bit, 
and then make my second pass. Just allows me to dial in my fit, get to snug, but not too snug where this, the panel is gonna fight me when I go to install it. Speaking of the back panel, I'm just gonna go ahead and cross cut this on the table saw. Now the client and I decided we wanted to make the shelves that are gonna be going inside this cabinet adjustable. Um, he just wanna make sure he had clearance for his electronics, his Xbox, all that kind of stuff. So just using my good old Craig shelf pin jig, cut those out. And like I said, I've talked about it in other videos, but you wanna run that drill in reverse and then put it forward, it minimizes your tear out. Now the last thing we do before we go ahead and glue all this up is we're gonna sand all the panels, especially the inside ones. It's gonna make it a whole lot easier to do now and it's gonna minimize the amount of work we'll have to do later on. So once all that was done, just go ahead and getting everything glued up. So a little type on two, tons of parallel clamps, and then just get a nice squeeze on it. I did do the middle sections as well at this time. I probably should have done those later on, but you know, everything worked out fine. It just would have been a little bit easier to get all those clamps on. Once the cabinet was drying out of clamps, we just needed to get the face frame put on. So just some more glue down all the seams, plop the dominoes in, and then wrestle this thing into place. Went in pretty easy. Really didn't even have to use that many clamps, you know? So pretty smooth glue up overall. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be adding some sliding barn doors to this cabinet. So I had gotten a basic hardware kit off Amazon and then just using a straight edge and my angle grinder, cut it down to the size I needed. I did go ahead and file the edges and paint everything just to avoid any rust. Once that was done, I was able to lay it out on the cabinet for my spacing and mark for all the holes. Once everything was marked out, just came back with a brad point bit in my drill and started pre-drilling all my holes. Left a bit, a little bit undersized from the bolts going through and I did not go all the way through. This thing came with some pretty aggressive bolts and I did end up cutting those down off camera just so that they wouldn't be protruding on the inside and catch any electronics or anything in there, especially the owner's hand. Next thing I did was go over to the table saw and start cutting out the strips that are gonna become my shelves. So I did this in two passes, just like before your initial pass to remove the bulk and then cleaned everything up on that secondary pass. Off camera, I roughed everything down to relative size and then I made my final pass on the table saw now I did switch to a zero clearance insert plate for my table saw. If you've ever worked with veneer plywood, it loves to tear out, especially when the cut's unsupported on that bottom side for the table saw. So a zero clearance insert makes this a, much, a whole lot easier. And then as long as you did everything correctly, you should have a nice tight fit. I'll come back and take another 16th off or so later on just to give it a little more play. To cover that front plywood edge, we're gonna go ahead and make some hardwood edge banding out of white oak over at the table saw. You can also use iron-on edge banding. The advantage of using the hardwood stuff is I don't have to fit, mess with it as much, and I know the color will match because it's the same white oak that I'm using on the rest of the cabinet. Before I put the edge banding on, make sure I have the shelf oriented the correct way. Once I know I do, start spreading the glue just like anything else. It's a pretty easy process, so just place it on. I did leave these strips a little bit wider than the shelf itself, so I have overhang on both sides. It makes it a lot less stressful, and then I can clean it up with a flush trim bit on a router later. And just like that, our edge banding is dry. So took the tape off and then just grabbed a Japanese pole saw to lop off those ends. Got it pretty flush with that. And then just cleaned it up with a sanding block. And I've done edge banding a few different ways over the years. And this is probably my favorite method just because of how simple it is. And it yields really good results. We decided to keep it super simple for the base. So I'm just going to be making six solid white oak feet. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is rip a 45 degree miter down the edge of both sides. This is gonna allow us to hide any seams and just gonna give it a cleaner look overall. To glue this up, I'm just gonna use a piece of clear packing tape on the bottom. This is gonna allow me to make sure that my miter is closed up nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna spread some glue in the joint and I'll use some blue packing tape to hold it shut on itself. Don't need anything too crazy here. Tape's all you really need. With the legs set off the side of the dry, it was time to go ahead and start working on these doors. Now here I am just cutting out the pieces for all my rails and styles using solid white oak. And then I'll have a plywood inset in the middle. Just gonna give the door a nice solid feel without having to go and deal with all the panel glue ups that are involved with doing solid doors. Once everything was cross cut to final length, I just need to go ahead and rip everything down to its final width. 
table saw make quick work of this i like to do this all at once so everything is a uniform width now to size the panel i just set it inside of the doors and made some marks I find this a whole lot more accurate and a whole lot faster than trying to take measurements and line everything up that way now that i have my mark i literally just line it up and cut it to length on the table saw and since both doors are the exact same size once i have one dialed i can go ahead and make that second cut took the doors together just cut out some dominoes same process as before so i decided to save you guys having to watch this footage of me doing the same thing again and then a quick dry assembly and then i went straight into the glue up and my camera died but as you can see got everything glued up and in clamps figure out exactly where I wanted this sliding door hardware to land. Just took everything over to the cabinet off camera, took some measurements and then set my squares. So that way I easily trace the lines. And then just using the hardware itself, marked out the holes, pre-drilled, and then locked everything into place. Instead of going with your typical X you see on farmhouse furniture, client and I decided to go with a Chevron pattern and then we're gonna paint those black. So over at the bandsaw, I am resawing some red oak. And then once I had everything resawed, I cut everything to fit. It's a little bit of a tedious process. I'm not gonna show all this on camera, um, but just fine tuning with the pole saw and then really getting everything tight with the block plane, a couple of swipes here and there until I got everything just right. Since the bandsaw was all fired up, I decided this would be a good time as any to go ahead and cut out all my legs. So doing three inch long legs, and you can see the bandsaw makes quick work of this and minimizes all my waste. To attach the legs to the cabinet itself, we're just gonna go ahead with some pocket holes. Um, this is gonna be plenty strong for the solution. And then I'm not even gonna glue these on in place. So if we ever decide later on that we wanna change the base out or anything like that, we can. Back over at the cabinet, I went ahead and pre-drilled for the door guides. These are just little brackets that are gonna keep the door from flopping around, um, especially as it slides back and forth. So pre-drill those, get the little alignment plate set in there loosely, and then just line everything up. There's only a few more details we need to go ahead and button up. Went ahead and cut out some hardwood edge banding for the back side of the cabinet, just to cover that plywood edge. You're not gonna see it, but it's doesn't take long and I think it does make this piece look a little more complete and then to get some pieces out of the way we'll go ahead and start putting some finish on some of these things so they can set off to the side and dry the client had chosen Rubio Monocoat's Havana for this one this is going to give it more of a gray more of an industrial rustic feel to the piece especially with the black hardware and everything now the last thing we needed to do was go ahead and cut this top down to size kind of had it off to the side for a while wait till everything was done so make sure that it was the right width and length. Once I ripped it to width, busted out the track saw and squared up the one edge. Once that edge was square, took my measurements and marked out for my final length. And of course I went and sanded everything all the way up to 220 grit and then broke all the edges by hand, but I will save you from having to watch all of that. Now for the underside of the top, I did decide to go ahead and add a edge profile. So I'm gonna do a 45 degree chamfer on the underside. And I did this in three passes with the trim router just to avoid any burning or tear out. I just wanted to go ahead and take a second and say thank you for watching. Really hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far and thank you for making it this far in the video. Now, if you guys have any questions, comments, something like that, definitely let me know down below. If you're not, please make sure to subscribe and tell your friends. All right, we're in the home stretch. so. Just putting that black paint on these chevrons. Went really heavy for the first coat. It was all going to absorb in there. And then I'll come back and sand it and apply a light second coat to get everything nice and even. And now we're finally ready to start putting finish on the top and cabinet. So just using some more of that Rubio Monocoat Havana. Spreading it around with a squeegee. And then scuffing it all in with a white scotch Bright pad to really get it all into all the grain. Same thing for the cabinet rub it all in and then you buff it off with white paper towels until it's clean you can also use rags I typically just use paper towels to attach the top we're going to use these figure eight fasteners and a forstner bit so we're just going to hollow out a little recess where they're going to sit so they'll sit flush to the cabinet itself these are a great way to attach a solid top as they're going to allow for seasonal wood movement as the seasons change and that top expands and contracts 
The last thing we had to do was put some finish on these doors, doing the back sides first, just like before, rub it in the scotch Bright pad, let it sit, and then just buff it off. To prevent the Rubio from getting on those chevrons and also so that this thing would actually be able to be attached, I made sure to trace out where those chevrons are gonna land on the doors so that way I can come on and glue them on last. And then just using some weights and some clamps to set these on, let these dry. Don't need a ton of weight here. And that's gonna be it for this one. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do a final assembly, make sure everything lines up, get all the little hardware installed. And then the client's actually gonna be picking this one up himself the next day. So just getting everything ready for him. And thank you again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Now I wanna go ahead and give a little bit of credit to those who watched all the way to the end. So this week, start your comment with either copy or tea. This will let me know that you've watched the video all the way through. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys next time.